Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. This is Lifestyle Critic where we break down movies and TV shows into their core elements and in this video we are going to be reviewing Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales or in certain other markets is known as Salazar's Revenge which is just really really interesting. Now this is the fifth installment within the franchise and similarly to the fourth installment it's a little bit of a standalone sequel. Now also similarly to the fourth movie, it tried to take a lot of inspiration from the first film in terms of having a lot more humour in there, in terms of having undead villains in there, and also having a romantic storyline weaved in there as well. Now I definitely think this movie could have been a lot more epic, but that being said, I really don't think it deserves to be as slated and as badly reviewed and critiqued as it did, as annoyingly, it then cancelled the planned sequel and the planned sixth movie, which is just super devastating. As similarly to the second and third movie, they were going to film the fifth and sixth movie back to back, but then they cancelled that plan and just went ahead with the fifth film, which then didn't perform that well, and now is potentially leading the franchise to be totally rebooted and potentially not even having Johnny Depp or the Jack Sparrow character which is just truly, truly bad. But anyway, as far as this movie goes, let's break down the review of the fifth part of the Caribbean movie in this video review. So from a storyline point of view, we are reintroduced to the character of Henry Tanner, who is the son of Will Tanner and Elizabeth Swan from the Pirates of the Caribbean trilogy. And he is wanting to free his father from the curse that was imposed on him at the end of the third movie, where he is always on the Dutchman ship. So in order to do this, he wants to find the Trident of Poseidon so that he can kill and destroy all curses imposed on the sea. He therefore wants to find the Jack Sparrow character and in turn finds a Karina character who is also trying to find her long lost father. On top of all of that, we also are introduced to the ghost pirate Salazar who wants to take his revenge on the Jack Sparrow character as when Jack was a lot younger, he cursed this character to be stuck in the Bermuda Triangle and to always attack other pirates and to be stuck and trapped in his ship. So from a storyline point of view, loads of new characters are being introduced that all have their particular motivations, but it's not too crowded like the third movie was. God, there were so many characters and not so great characters in that movie, whereas here they are a lot better, a lot more fleshed out, and you can really understand where they're all coming from. Now from a positives point of view, this movie had a truly epic based quest in the heart of it, very similar to the fourth movie. A lot of inspiration I think was taken from the fourth movie, but in this one they are looking for the trident of Poseidon to stop all curses. So it really does have very elevated and very life or death type situations in this movie, which is great. It has a brilliant opening sequence, which is absolutely hilarious. The Jack Sparrow character is truly on full form in that sequence as him and his pirate comrades are trying to steal and rob a bank, which I thought was absolutely hilarious, within the Jack Sparrow spin of how to do that. We also have some familiar aspects being brought back in this movie, but also some new aspects being introduced which would allow the franchise to be taken forward, which I thought was really, really great in terms of new storyline aspects and new characters being introduced, which are really nicely being interwoven with the core fabric of the franchise, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. And also, in particular, at the end of this movie, but also peppered throughout, there were some really emotional moments in there as well, especially with the Babosa character. So there were a lot to like in this movie. However, from a negative point of view, it can feel a little bit repetitive, as it did use the blueprint in the first movie in this movie as well. So a lot of inspiration, but a lot of copycat behavior happening as well, which I can understand can be a little bit frustrating. For me, I thought they did a little bit of a new spin on it, but I can understand the frustration, especially how Force Awakens was very similar to Star Wars A New Hope. So a little bit similar thing happening here. And also they brought back the Davy Jones character at the end of this movie, which I thought was absolutely ludicrous, as he was just such a frustrating character and already cannibalized the second movie and the third movie. So I don't think we need this character returning. But anyway, I also think this movie was kind of missing a little bit of an X factor. Whilst the first movie and the fourth movie were absolutely brilliant and legendary, and this movie had the potential to be on that level as well, but like I said, it was just missing something, which just meant it wasn't going to be at the same level as those movies. But anyway, from a storyline point of view, this movie is actually pretty compelling. So from a cast and characters point of view, it was really, really nice in this movie. As like I said before, they had a lot of returning characters, but also a lot of new characters being introduced, and they were all working together 
so so well so let's go through them one by one so first up we have Johnny Depp who is back as the legendary and iconic character of Jack Sparrow surprisingly in this movie he was less of a lead character and was more just popping up into certain moments so that we don't forget his face but also having new characters being introduced and kind of co-leading the film as well obviously the Johnny Depp actor was going through a lot in his personal life and apparently at certain points he had to have lines fed to him through a hearing piece so it was a really different type of performance to the very vivacious and very energetic character that we've known in the first four installments but you know that being said the Jack Sparrow character still had some brilliant one-liners in this movie and some truly iconic moments especially the opening sequence and some other sequences throughout this movie as well and we also got to see the younger version of the Jack Sparrow character which I thought was absolutely brilliant they did a little bit of de-aging got a new actor to play the younger version of this character and I just thought it was so so great to see what happened when this character was in the past to see a lot more of the backstory how that is going to be giving the lead villain character a lot more motivation to really despise and hate the Jack Sparrow character so I thought it was brilliant the way that we were able to flash back into the past and find out a lot more about this iconic brilliant character speaking of which we then have Javier Bourdain who was playing the Salazar character and you can really feel the anger and the frustration and the hatred that this character has towards the Jack Sparrow character and he was a brilliant lead character in his own right as well definitely pulling a lot of the aspects of the undead ghost pirate Barbosa from the first movie and you can really feel the revenge just pouring out of this character but I really like the aspects that they had as well whereas he's not able to go on land which I thought was a really interesting little dichotomy that he had with the other pirates and really interestingly this actor in real life is married to Penelope Cruz who was obviously playing the Angelica character in the fourth movie so they definitely kept it all in the family and hopefully we'll be able to see all of these characters potentially returning in the sixth movie next up we have Jeffrey Rush who was also back as the Barbosa character so definitely being influenced a lot by the Salazar character in this movie he could have had a very happy life on land but he really wanted to have the you know that pirate danger the lure of it all of the excitement so he kind of came back and was again another rival to the Jack Sparrow character they have rinsed and repeated that little formula quite a lot but actually it surprisingly works really well here and I think the Barbosa character is just such a true legendary pirate that he just really brings that familiarity and the newness in this movie as well. Speaking of new characters we then have Brenton Thwaites who did such a good job in terms of being the Henry Tanner character who was a new lead in this particular film and if you play the Monkey Island games I feel like this character at moments was definitely communicating Guybrush Threepwood vibes definitely in terms of how he looked and how he behaved which I thought was absolutely hilarious and you can really feel that this character just wants to do right by his parents and he wants to reunite them so you can really feel the courage and the desire that this character has. Speaking of new characters we also have K.S. Goladario who is playing a bit of a new type of character who is a really intelligent woman astronomer character and she really actually surprisingly fitted in super well and you can really tell the intelligence difference between this character and all of the pirates and there were some hilarious sequences that took place as well. Unfortunately for this character I think she's always going to be compared to Keira Knightley's Elizabeth Swan performance and whilst they are very different characters I just feel like she didn't have the same stage presence or the same star power that Keira Knightley brought to the franchise and whilst she did do a good job in terms of playing the Karina character I just feel like she wasn't able to be at the same level as Penelope Cruz and Keira Knightley before her but you know we also had the returning other crew members who were just absolutely hilarious they were also bringing back the familiarity and I just love some of the sequences some of the in squabbling some of the handing over the captain ranges for personal gain reasons as well which was absolutely hilarious so from a cast and character's point of view the fifth part of the Caribbean movie is actually surprisingly awesome so from a visuals point of view you know they are looking very impressive in this movie this is the latest Pirates of the Caribbean franchise movie and so as you would expect the visuals are looking top notch in this film and it truly shows in all of the sequences so for example the opening act is absolutely brilliant definitely Pirates of the Caribbean at its best with the Jack Sparrow character and his crew trying to steal the bank which was absolutely hilarious the seas parting when they're trying to find the trident of Poseidon looked absolutely awesome as well the islands that they visit the hilarious wedding sequence that was taking place was absolutely brilliant all of the ship sequences are really really cool all of the battle sequences are absolutely epic the sequences at the end of this movie are truly cool as well 
and you really do feel like you're in a bit of a fantasy adventure movie, especially with all of the curses and all of the ship sequences in this movie as well. I wouldn't say it's as brilliant as the fourth movie was in terms of the fantasy adventure aspects, but you know, that being said, it definitely does make its mark from a visuals point of view. So from a comparison point of view, you know, I definitely think the fifth movie, Dead Men Tells No Tales, is definitely a strong contender for a great part of the Caribbean movie. I wouldn't say it's as great as the first one or the fourth one. I would say it's miles better than the third one at World's End, and I would say it's pretty much on the same level as the second one, Dead Man's Chest. So I would say, you know, this is a great entry, a great standalone sequel, but maybe not so great as some movies and a lot better than others. So it's definitely in the middle. So overall, I have to say, you know, I really enjoyed the fifth part of the Caribbean movie, Dead Men Tells No Tales slash Salazar's Revenge. Now, granted, I do understand that this movie isn't perfect, and it definitely has its flaws in there. It's just such a shame that the next sixth movie just didn't get made back to back like it was planned, as it would have just been so interesting to see what would have happened next. And speaking of which, there are just so many open-ended storylines that they just haven't wrapped up that could just mean that the sixth movie can be truly epic especially if they bring back the Penelope Cruz character of Angelica as well and just really get to see what will happen next with the Jack Sparrow character and with all of the other characters as well. Just so much potential that they can realise if they just continue this franchise and just give us that sick movie. But I know a lot of things are happening behind the scenes that we aren't aware of. So who knows what will happen, but either way, this movie is pretty awesome. And so for all of those reasons, I'm going to give it a solid 6 out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.